Welcome to the training module on the Low-G iMEMS accelerometers by Analog Devices. This training module will introduce ADI's accelerometer solution and its iMEMS Low-G accelerometer portfolio. Acceleration and its derivative properties such as vibration and tilt belong to the vast amount of physical quantities subject to measurement and analysis by various means. An accelerometer is a sensor used to measure acceleration. The control system uses the measured acceleration to control changing dynamic conditions. For instance, an accelerometer with activity detection enables complicated controls and physical buttons being replaced by gesture recognition interface controlled by the tap of a finger. With this technology development, modern accelerometers expand to four modes of motion sensing, acceleration, vibration, shock, and tilt. Nowadays, the motion sensing function becomes very commonplace in a wide range of areas such as consumer electronics, medical devices, industrial equipment, and automotive electronics. The motion sensing can be classified into five types, acceleration, vibration, shock, tilt, and rotation. Acceleration includes translational movement measures the change in velocity in a unit of time. Acceleration with a negative value is called deacceleration. If we consider acceleration over various periods of time, then vibration can be thought of as acceleration and in deacceleration that happens quickly in a periodic manner. Similarly, shock is acceleration that occurs instantaneously, but unlike vibration, a shock is a non-periodic function that typically happens once. Tilt is the change in position with respect to the defined reference. Rotation is a measure of angular rate motion. This mode differs from the others because rotation may take place without any change in acceleration. An accelerometer is used to detect the first four modes of motion. Rotation is measured by a gyroscope. There are many different ways to make an accelerometer, such as piezoelectric, bulk micro-machined piezoresistive, capacitive, and surface micro-machined capacitive. The surface micro-machined technology is called MEMS, or Microelectromechanical System. In recent years, MEMS sensors have made tremendous advances in terms of cost and level of on-chip integration. The core element of a typical MEMS accelerometer is a moving beam structure composed of two sets of fingers. One set is fixed to a solid ground plane on a substrate. The other is attached to a known mass mounted on springs that can move in response to an applied acceleration. The accelerometers with the largest share of the market today use differential capacitors to measure g-force. This is then converted into volts or bits and then passed to a microprocessor to perform an action. Understanding the level of acceleration for an application enables a product to be designed with the optimal accelerometer. A low G sensing range is less than 20 G and deals with motion a human can generate. High G is useful for sensing motion related to machines or vehicles. In essence, motion that humans cannot create. This graph shows applications and their respective acceleration ranges. As you can see, every acceleration range has different applications. For example, fall detection and tilt control is in the 1G to 2G range. Shock detection is in the 2G to 8G range and vibration is in the 8G to 10G range, and a pedometer is in the 20G to 30G range. Nowadays, accelerometers are available in a wide variety of measuring ranges. 
reaching up to thousands of G's. So choosing the right accelerometer for your application can be a daunting task. Here we list some key parameters to help the potential user make a preliminary decision. ADI's MEMS-based accelerometer portfolio is available in one, two, and three axis configurations. With analog or digital output, up to 16G sensing range. These accelerometers can detect and measure acceleration, tilt, shock, and vibration, enabling a wide range of market differentiating industrial, medical, communications, consumer, and automotive applications. These devices also address the high performance, low power, integrated functionality, and small size requirements in countless applications. Let's look at the ADX-L345 device for a better understanding of ADI's solution. The ADX-L345 is a small, thin, low-power, three-axis accelerometer with high-resolution, 13-bit, measurement at up to plus and minus 16 g. It measures the static acceleration of gravity in tilt-sensing applications, as well as dynamic acceleration resulting from motion or shock. Several special sensing functions are provided. Activity and inactivity sensing detect the presence or lack of motion and if the acceleration on any axis exceeds a user set level. Tap sensing detects single and double taps. Free fall sensing detects if the device is falling. The ADX-L345 also incorporates an on-chip ADC that simplifies hardware configurations in wireless handsets, personal navigation devices, and other mobile applications. The ADXL345 has built-in detection for activity and inactivity. This function creates the possibility of using the ADXL345 to notice when a device is picked up or put down. When this is detected, it can generate an interrupt that powers functions on and off automatically. For example, if one person moves the device and then sits it, sits it down, the part goes inactive. After a certain time, inactivity is triggered and the device generates an inactivity interrupt. After a while, the person picks up the device, which means the device is active again the device generates an activity interrupt correspondingly. For security reasons, the person may be requested a passcode to continue operation. Movement-driven on-off features are human-friendly because they eliminate repetitive action on the user's part. For humans, an unobserved fall can have very serious consequences. The main research on the principles of fall detection focuses on the acceleration change characteristics during the process of a human body falling. Acceleration changes differently during the motions of walking downstairs, walking upstairs, sitting down, and standing up from a chair. The diagram pre presents the acceleration change curves during the process of falling. The phenomena of weightlessness will occur at the start of the fall. After experiencing weightlessness, the human body will impact the ground or other objects. The acceleration curve shows this as a large shock. The human body will remain in a motionless position for a short period, which presents an interval of flatline. Tap sensing is capable of detecting single and double taps. If only the single tap function is in use, the single tap interrupt is triggered when the acceleration goes below the threshold, as long as the maximum tap duration time has not been exceeded. If both single and double tap functions are in use, 
the single tap interrupt is triggered when the double tap event has been either validated or invalidated. The ADXL345 is able to communicate with a microprocessor using SPI or I2C serial interface. In both communications, it operates as a slave. For SPI, either three or four wire configuration is possible, as shown in the connection diagrams in Figure 1 and Figure 2. CS is the serial port enable line and is controlled by the SPI master. SDI and SDO are the serial data input and output, respectively. Data should be sampled at the rising edge of S-Clock. For I2C configuration, it only requires a simple two-wire connection, as shown in Figure 3. If other devices are connected to the same I2C bus, the normal operating voltage level of these other devices cannot exceed VDD I slash O by more than 0.3 volt. External pull-up resistors RP are necessary for proper I squared C operation. ADI offers a series of MEMS sensor evaluation systems for fast and easily configuring, evaluating, and analyzing the performance characteristics. The ADXL345 evaluation system hardware consists of two interconnected PCBs that are powered and connected to a PC via a standard USB cable. The larger board is a universal main PCB that is common to all ADI inertial sensor evaluation systems. The smaller PCB accommodates the socket for the specific ADI accelerometer to be evaluated. When evaluating a different ADI inertial sensor, only the satellite PCB needs to be changed out. 